Various types of robot revolution have long been predicted, whether it's automating our housework, taking our jobs, or taking over the world. But outside of our production lines, the robot revolution has yet to happen. In the 1980s, predictions of robot butlers by the year 2000 never came to pass. Progress was slower than expected, but 10 years ago, an event would happen that would change the course of robotics forever. In 2011, off the coast of Japan, the fourth largest earthquake ever recorded generated a massive tsunami that would devastate its east coast. At the nuclear power plant in Fukushima, a 15 meter wave crashed over the seawall and flooded the facility. What followed was the second worst nuclear disaster in history. In the immediate aftermath, emergency response teams entered the facility with a team of robots to help contain the meltdown. But after an earthquake, tsunami, and subsequent hydrogen explosion, the building complex was littered with debris. It provided a terrain too complicated for the emergency robots to traverse. As a result, they failed to accomplish many of the tasks needed to prevent the spread of contaminants, and human workers had to be sent into high radiation zones instead. Their failure in the Fukushima incident was a reminder that despite our technological progress, when things go wrong, we still rely on humans for some of our most dangerous tasks. In response, a 2015 DARPA competition was held to test the cutting edge of robotics on eight scenarios based on the Fukushima incident. With $3.5 million in cash prizes available, some of the best minds in the industry got to designing a robot that could win. Tasks included driving and exiting a vehicle, opening a door, walking over rubble, climbing stairs, and using a cutting tool to make a hole in a wall. While all these tasks are easy for humans, for robots, In the five years since that competition though, things have changed. The latest robots can confidently handle rough terrain. They can run, jump, open doors, climb stairs, even do backflips and dance. Leading the development of mobile semi-autonomous robots is Boston Dynamics. Their first product spot went on sale last summer, and just last month, Hyundai bought an 80% stake in the company, valuing it at over a billion dollars. So what's changed? How did we get from clumsy stumbling robots to market-ready, athletic, and capable in such a short time? Robotics isn't a new field. First conceptualized in 3000 BC, an Egyptian water clock used a humanoid figure to strike bells on the hour. From ancient Greece through to the Renaissance, novelty automata have continued to be created for highly specialized and largely artistic purposes. The modern electromechanical robot first emerged in the 1950s, and within 10 years, the first prototypes had started to appear in car factories. Since then, industrial applications have skyrocketed, seeing widespread use across manufacturing. It's hard to understate the impact that robotic automation has already had on civilization. Its contribution to the modern economy is vast. So you could say the robot revolution has already happened, but the revolution that Boston Dynamics is leading isn't the same. This time, it's different. Industrial robots have traditionally been expensive, with complex installation, programming, and commissioning. While their long-term cost effectiveness is high due to their low operating cost, speed, and precision, their utility is limited to highly specialized activities. In principle, a typical six-axis robot can accomplish a wide range of tasks, but it needs complex reprogramming and retooling to do so, and moving one to a new location requires extensive installations. This is narrow robotics. Robots that can accomplish a specific task really well, but don't easily generalize to new ones. These new robots are different because they are much more generally capable. What made the 2015 DARPA challenge so difficult wasn't the eight challenges individually, rather that one robot had to accomplish all of them in sequence. A tracked robot can get over rough terrain easily, but can't then drive, egress from a vehicle, or climb up stairs. 
This generation is mobile. They can manipulate, recover, and adapt. Their semi-autonomous capabilities mean they don't need careful programming for every activity. They automatically interpret their environment, allowing the navigation of complex terrain and buildings without assistance. But you may still be wondering what they're actually useful for. While the need for industrial robots is obvious, what does this new generation of robotics actually enable? Although the cutting edge in robotics is no doubt impressive, their success and scaling will be determined by how useful this technology is. Our new robots are certainly more capable in disaster situations, but what other uses will they have? Aside from military and other dangerous environments, there are a number of areas where they could also prove valuable. Drones have already proved useful for aerial surveying. Similarly, this technology could make routine internal surveying and inspection much easier for utilities and construction. But perhaps the largest potential lies in mobility, and in this regard, Hyundai's purchase is quite telling. Like many automotive companies, Hyundai is transitioning from a car company to a mobility company. Their investment in robotics and development of air taxis isn't an accident. They see general mobility as the big challenge and opportunity of the next decade. However, mobility isn't just about moving people from one place to another. It's an essential part of logistics. Automation is already transforming this industry, but expect this to go even further, both in and out of the factory. Cars are getting very close to driving themselves, but a human is still needed to cover the last 10 meters for delivery. This is important because driving is the most common job in the US, accounting for 3% of the workforce, and delivery driver is the fastest growing job sector in the US economy. Robotics could have a big impact on that. The real value of the new wave of robots isn't their industrial efficiency. Rather, it's that they're a new platform for generalized mobility. The real enabler is getting the hardware you need to almost anywhere a human can get to, or perhaps to somewhere they can't. By themselves, they still can't do much, but a platform that can carry and use equipment anytime, anywhere, remotely or by routine is the start of a major shift. Still, before we get too carried away, it's important to remember that this is just the first step towards general purpose robotics. The future of robots doing all the housework isn't here yet. They still need to be controlled or programmed. While they can pathfind and traverse for themselves, they don't have true autonomous capabilities. You can't ask them to perform tasks they don't know yet. The robots aren't taking our jobs just yet. Spot is an impressive piece of kit for $75,000, but given that it needs an operator to perform many of its functions, it's only likely to be cost-effective in niche scenarios. Other cheaper and less capable versions do exist, although their drawbacks remain similar. But the question is, for how much longer? Consider how quickly we've moved forward. Let's recall what the state of the art looked like five years ago, and where we're at today. Robots like Spot and Atlas are only possible due to significant progress in a number of key technologies. Early prototypes required a combustion engine to power, but a modern lithium-ion pack can run a robot dog for 90 minutes. The cost and size of sensors continues to fall rapidly, allowing for more sophisticated control systems in a much smaller package. In 2013, the advanced LiDAR systems used on autonomous cars, similar to those that Spot uses, cost $75,000. Today, they're just $500. Perhaps the largest progress, however, is that the computing power and onboard artificial intelligence has advanced tremendously, enabling their real-time pathfinding and obstacle traversal. And these are really just the tip of the iceberg. If this is the progress in just five years, what will the state of robotics look like in another five? Now that Spot and similar systems are being developed in industry and commercial partners are developing their own solutions on top of the platform, we can expect an acceleration in progress. Such acceleration in speed and scale is important. Like we've seen in other technologies, from cars to smartphones, accelerating to larger markets is vital for cost reduction and making this technology accessible beyond governments and corporations. While Boston Dynamics are leading technologically, there are a number of companies such as Unitree, Ghost, and Agility Robotics who are producing their own mobile robots, and this will also be important for driving their future costs down. 
If it can successfully branch out of novelty and niche applications, this technology is well placed to become truly revolutionary. We may be heading towards an age of generalized mobility, where a human doesn't have to sit inside a machine to move things around. Whether air, sea or land, no matter the terrain, layout or obstacles, logistics is getting faster, cheaper and easier, with greater precision and dexterity than ever. This advance alone has the potential to change industries. But there's one especially pivotal technology that could really propel robotics to a world-changing scale. Similar to robotics, artificial intelligence has been growing from narrow to generally capable. And as we edge towards general AI, so do we also edge closer to general robotics. In the near term, the cost, complexity and mobility have been a limiting factor for general robotics, but that limitation is rapidly diminishing. A spot with modest levels of intelligence would be extremely valuable if it were capable of processing new requests and deciding how to carry them out effectively. Imagine, Atlas, please fetch a pallet, stack it with 30 red boxes, wrap it and load it into the truck. It's not hard to see how these capabilities would be game-changing. How far away we are from achieving this is a question for another video. But it's perhaps not as far as you think. And since these robots are a customizable platform, quickly integrating such AI improvements might not be so difficult. As we've seen, this field is progressing rapidly and the potential of this technology is certainly there. Like the industrial robots that automated the production line, general robots aim to automate the world around us. Yet, it still remains a glimpse of what our robot future may look like. For now, robot butlers and a jobless economy will stay a staple of science fiction. Well, for the most part. How quickly we move towards generalized robotics depends on a number of factors. How readily will this new generation be adopted? How fast will the unit cost fall? How quickly will their adaptive intelligence grow? For me, the key to understanding the future of robotics is to track how much of an impact these new robots have on mobility over the next few years. This is perhaps the most important near-term indicator of the scale and speed with which this industry will develop and how quickly general robotics could arise. Of course, looking forward, there are many more things we could investigate. Miniaturization, dexterity, and swarm robotics. And there are many more important questions that we still need to answer. What impact will general robotics have on jobs and the larger economy? What are the dangers of more automation and AI in the world? Can we leverage this technology to solve some of our greatest global problems? These are topics for another video, however. If you want to track the latest breakthroughs in robotics, mobility, or other emergent technologies, you can subscribe to be notified. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.